and he's ready to go. Noodle on his left, Jess on his right. Hey, hold up, don't start a fight. He's got you covered with all the sports. Don't fret, he's wearing shorts. It's time for waking Jake in the morning. Waking Jake at night. Jake sucks. Hello and welcome back to Wake and Jake. Myself, BBD. It's good to be back for me. Missed you guys. Was away in St. Lulu. St. Lucia. Half vacation, half wedding planning. Got some good stuff done. And so did the New York Yankees. Segway. Uh, yeah, I'm ready to talk sports. No, no f- floof on this. No review of Bullet Train, the movie I watched on the flight. You know what one that is? Is that the... the? It's Brad the Pitt. Ho- no, oh, no, okay, not the one. No, he's like on a... I'm thinking the, of, an, of a You've of seen a the Japanese preview. Movie. He's, he's on it, and it's like he's... I'll do anything to get off this train, and I don't want to fight. I don't know. It was okay. It's not like a movie. It's just a bunch of scenes put together. Got it. No review, though. No review on that, though. Uh... While I was on the flight home, the New York Yankees signed Anthony Rizzo. Rizzo. Uh, A-Rod's Anthony Rizzo. Uh, he comes back to the New York Yankees, 217 a year, mm-hmm. but with uh, an option for a third year yeah, that has a buyouts. $6 million buyout. So I actually saw Fangraphs listed it as two for 40. That's what the guarantee is. Right. So like the so way that's... contracts get tweeted out now is that is what it is so that's interesting to look at uh Rizzo was awesome for the Yankees this year um reliving the Yankee season and when they were so good and where he was in the lineup and like that uh, that stuff matters I used to always talk about it with uh Eddie Rosario when he was kind of in his prime and on the twins he was in the middle of the twins lineup hitting third like his his 800 OPS meant more than a guy who was batting eighth in doing that and not being part of the game plan. Uh, Anthony Rizzo was at the top of the Yankees lineup all year. I know Jimmy started actually doing facts to the Jakey Butterknife stat of if there was no shift, what kind of batting average Rizzo would have. Jimmy did his loose Jimmy math, which also not perfect, but it had about 11, 13 more hits, which would have made Rizzo about a 252 hitter, which I've been... Sang just off the top of my head, like Rizzo feels like he's a 250 batting average guy at this point. He's got no speed, so he's not going to beat out infield singles. It yep. um, feels like when we get to no shift, that probably is, is where he should be. But, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think second basemen are still going to lean over, and, uh, you know, some of those balls will still be picked, but some up the middle won't, and, uh, and all that. So Anthony Rizzo comes back. He hit 32 homers last year. Uh, the short porch likes him. Uh, and yeah, uh, good for him and good for the Yankees uh, because Anthony Rizzo, if you remember, he got traded over, got COVID, um, and it clearly affected him. Um, and I think it was his first time having the short porch. He talked about aiming for it. He was pulling all of these fly balls. He gets a contract with the Yankees with the opt-out. He opts out, and he gets another payday on top of it. Good for Tony Riz, uh, who in 130 games had his career Tied his career high in 32 home runs. The fourth time he's done that. How nuts is that? Uh, what he did for the Yankees infield defense. I mean, watching him compared to Luke Voigt uh, looked like bringing a gun to a knife fight. Like, just a different dynamic. And lefty-righty balance. Uh, the Yankees got away from that for a little bit. Go look at their, like, 2019-2020 lineups. There was just... Hard hitting righties. They their analytics department went well. Righties that can hit it hard to the opposite field, we can still steal home runs at Yankee Stadium. Yes, it kind of works. It also doesn't. You need balance. You need different mixes. And and Rizzo's at bat in the middle of that lineup. You know he can when he chokes up with two strikes, uh, do something to stay alive. Uh, he's like a lot of modern hitters. He's going to aim for that porch and he's going to get there a lot. And awesome. Um, 
there weren't many options at first base, uh, especially on both sides of the ball. I've seen, I've seen people when those Astros rumors happened, and I was on the beach in St. Lucia. I got very nervous. Um, you know, we often have this mindset of, you know, the Yankees and the Astros. Like, well, you couldn't, couldn't do that. If play, player on the Red Sox going over to the Yankees. Player on the Yankees going to the Red Sox. That can't. You know, we hate them. Players don't care, it, and they shouldn't. Uh, they have to get paid. They're like putting putting food on the table and a lot of other stuff, but they're taking care of their family in a short window. That when I saw, because Yuli Gurriel's a free agent. Yeah, he's gonna be thirty nine. Thirty. Yeah, just had his worst year of his MLB career at thirty eight. So when I saw that, and by the way, when you start talking about gaps in teams, would Anthony Rizzo not bat? Fifth or sixth for the Astros? Wherever they put him, it, it would make sense. Not really a problem either way. And the Yankees, you're like depending on him to be a top three hitter in their lineup currently. Uh, but yeah, when I saw those rumors, I got a little scared. I, I do think that was a little bit of agent funny business, maybe getting the extra million on the opt-out or whatever it is. Uh, because, and this is, I'll let my Yankee freak flag fly for a minute. Um, I... Those quotes after the year from Andy Martino saying multiple players were shocked at Judge getting booed and not, like, wanting to be in New York. Rizzo wants to be here. Um, we we heard from pretty good sources that he, um, when he got traded from the Cubs, he kind of called his shot to the Yankees. I, I think it was a side of baseball that doesn't happen a lot. But I think Anthony Rizzo was so well-respected in the Cubs organization, and they wanted it to end on the highest of notes because he's a legend. They broke, the, they broke a curse <laughs> in yeah. that city, and he's the guy. Like, he's the front man of the band. They had, they had a lot of good members of their band, but he was the front man. Um, he was the, the leader of that team. He was the guy uh, that I think he kind of said, I want to go to the Yanks, um, make it happen. Uh, if, a, if another team blew them out, sure, I do, who knows what they would have done, but they, we know they made an effort to make it work for Rizzo they, and get him to the Browns. You know, he, he wasn't going he wasn't going to do a rental period on some of the lesser teams or, you know. I don't and, remember and who Oakland, was marginal that yeah. year, but he wasn't going to be a Rockies rental or something. So he came to New York City. He likes New York City. He loves Judge, which we'll get to in a minute. Um and yeah, the the first base market, Jose Abreu, he's thirty six years old. He had a great year, uh, but you know, father time will kick in at some point. I mean, Rizzo's thirty three; like his, it's he's yeah, getting older. With a back. After them, you're looking at Matt Carpenter's, Will yeah. Myers, Josh Bell is kind of the other big name. He's the only one that like is going to get multiple years, but you, the defense has never been graded out great, and the bat year to year has. Has wavered a and, bit. And I saw a couple people in the comments that were like, Josh Bell, you know, at the Astros want him. I don't know um, what he does defensively. I, I, I don't. That doesn't feel like the Astros. Um, but with what the rest of that infield does, maybe that's... Right, if, if you can... There's a world. If you can tap into switch hitter Josh Bell and, and it makes sense, like, I, I would that happened shocked. tomorrow, I'm not surprised. I mean, but. honestly, I looking at this and knowing how the Astros operate... I, I wouldn't be surprised if Jose Abreu goes there. Um, Jose Abreu, a guy that's done everything in baseball, um, why not go to Houston and chase a ring there? Um, and they just went from Yuli Gurriel to Jose Abreu. Does that not sound like Houston shit? Uh, so that's scary uh, when I say that out loud. But either way, Rizzo was the option for the Yankees because they need the defense at first base. They won the the Yankees won the team Gold Glove Award. How about that? <laughs> Huge. Uh, Rizzo was a big part of that, along with Trevino um, and Judge and a lot of other guys. He plays the position that interacts directly with the other positions. Being lefty, helping out the rest of the infield. Tony Riz had to be the move, and it, it's what we've talked about on Talking Yanks uh, a good amount. And I I mean. This makes, I thought Aaron Judge was coming back to the Yankees anyways, because as I've told you here, and I'm talking Yanks, and I'm talking baseball, if Aaron Judge doesn't come back, you're not the Yankees anymore. Um, 
you're just not. I, I mean, part of the, the fanfare of being a Yankee, and I know there's we're on to a different generation of Yankee fans that aren't used to as much winning or, you know, the top free agent is Jason Giambi. We're getting Jason Giambi. You know, Gary Sheffield, like, I know even the winning wasn't the craziest in those years, but it was just, it's who the Yankees were, that if they had the best player in baseball who broke the home run record, uh, an AL home run record that was held by Yankees, hmm. like, Judge and Rizzo are close. Um, I I was on it in a Jakey joking way uh, a couple times. Uh, one of my theories I threw out there was that Anthony R- Judge was the first time Anthony Rizzo was teammates with someone who was a like confirmed better player. Like Chris Bryant could have better years. Like uh, Javi yeah. Baez could have better better months. Um, Not in a he disrespects other guys' way. Just in like a like he like. It's a next level respect for Rizzo when both, he came in. Both sides like, of the ball and 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 who he is. Um, that yeah, there's there's almost a little admiration for Judge. I took it to some silly uh, Jake levels. On, I think I mentioned swingers once or <laughs> twice, and then I uh, became friendly with with Judge's wife Sam. That I feel bad throwing that out there because uh, she's just nice, and I don't want to I don't want to put that out there. Uh, but I guess I just did again. No, um, Judge. And Rizzo, man, Judge hasn't interacted like that with anyone in his time with the Yankees. Yeah. I mean, he was part of the Baby Bombers, and they're all boys, you know, whether you're going Gary's, Glaber's, Andujar's, like... The next, like, like, friendship I think of is is Tyler Wade. Yeah. We love Tyler Him and T-Wade were boys. They're boys' boys. (laughs) Wedding boys. Um, Paparazzi boys. Um... Like, even, even, I just threw out Hicks out there a little bit. Like, some the way they'd yuck it up in the outfield was fun. And sometimes you'd see him in the dugout. But Rizzo yeah. and Judge were attached to the hip that for Anthony Rizzo, so think about everything I just laid out. Tony Riz, the king of the Cubs, kind of forced his way to the Yankees. Resigns with the Yankees. Now twice. Um, very close with Judge. All the agents know what's up. We had the the Steinbrenner quote after, right after the signing or right before the signing. This that was right like, after. we're not we're not going to be beat out for Judge. Don't know when he said it. Yeah, but not, it came out right after. Not sure what all of that was in general. Because we'll getting as, more on talking Yanks tomorrow yeah, as you're listening. That we'll be doing that. Because uh, yeah, I know Jimmy joked about it, and it's kind of this weird media thing we live in that, you know, we if. If he had a quote that was like, you know, a lot of a lot of teams are going to put bids in, hope we're the highest, we'd all kill him. Yeah, there's a but there's the also, best thing would have been saying nothing, but not, once you've crossed the he said something threshold, I guess this is the best. From a neg- negotiation standpoint, it's pretty pretty dumb to say, uh, yeah, we won't be outbid because then you know. But- Maybe this was just just always gets said at the owners' meetings. Yeah, and I I don't know. Maybe he's starting to feel that Steinbrenner last name a little more. I don't know. I Uh, saw (laughs) saw a good tweet yesterday with the the Shaq screenshot after that quote, tweeting that quote, saying like, "I have to apologize to you. I wasn't familiar with your game." (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So if that happens, I think we'll see that more. So yeah, we'll we'll see, but um, I I think it bodes really well uh, for Judgey coming back because again, uh, would Anthony Rizzo be coming back to a Yankees team that wasn't a at least in play for Judge? Um, Even the most pessimistic you can be about Judge negotiations, it's Judge has not already decided he's not coming back. Like, no, that's like the I, most pessimistic you can be. I I I think uh, I thought Judge had a really good chance to come back to the Yankees either way. When you were looking at Yankees potential offseason plans, really at first base, uh, judge judges the king and the queen piece if this is the chessboard, obviously. But without Rizzo, go through those first base options I talked about. Uh Josh Bell's not a lock for anything really. Um I I think he can be good. I, I think he's got a shot. Jose Abreu's Older, right-handed, can he be at first base defensively every day? I don't think so. The Yankees' option was Rizzo, and then after that, it, it, it it's was, Judge. It was the the other first base option would have been like taking a one for 
nine flyer on Brandon Belt, which hey, he was good last full season he played. Yeah, you know? maybe he could give you something. But Short porch, so like it, that. But that was the only the only bargain bin for how the Yankees season winded down. Um, and we'll see. We'll see what other news we get in the coming days. Uh, the uh, arbit- salary arbitration is coming up. We heard the Yankees are trying to move IKF and Glaber. Uh, good luck. Um, I, tenders. I uh, I don't know if if you have someone that's in on IKF. Uh, good. Uh, Glaber. It feels like his time has run out, especially with the Rizzo contract. That means DJ LeMahieu is going to have to be at second base or third base. Um, and you've got a lot of middle infielders coming up, too, between Peraza. Um, There's Herrera, also... Uh, like it, It's impossible for Glaber's stock to get higher than it is right now, I think. He ended up putting together... point forward. He put together a nice season by the end of it. Uh you know, he's still, he's what now, 26. It, it felt yeah. like he kind of grew up midway through the season. He's, uh, was this his first kid? Uh, I believe so. First or second. That's so I, I don't know. You know, I I didn't grow up really until I was 28 or so. Uh, Glaber Torres is still a couple years younger than that with millions of dollars, had been playing for the Yankees. Um, I, I think he's still got something in there that the Yankees, I tweeted out, if they re-sign Judge, uh, which I think they will. Um, if they don't, I, I will be shocked because then there's really not a game plan. <laughs> My God. Just, uh, when different. If and when they re-sign Judge, which, hey, they signed Rizzo. I think they're going to sign Judge. Every quote they've had about it? Then you just pretty much have to figure out left field and some of the left side of the infield, and there's free agents available. There's trades to be made. There's There's moves to be made at those positions that would make sense and would be the Yankees were good. They got hurt by the end, and they had spots that they could have addressed all year, and they didn't, and it ended up biting them. They can now address those, um, and they can make the tweaks, and you hope DJ LeMahieu was one of their best players this season, and we didn't see him for the final two months. (gasps) Slash, we did. They brought him back for three games instead of Matt Carpenter, and then they never activated him. It's not like he looked lost those three games. I know he didn't get, like, an extra base hit, but... We don't need to relive that. This is not an ad. Go check out Nikki Cass's video of the final 10 seconds of cooking shows uh, because there's a pumpkin tied into it. Um, There were some other teams in the MLB that brought in some better help with a couple free agent signings, and you can get better help um, with better help. Mental health is an important part of life. It's an important part of sports. It's an important part of uh, everything. Uh, and if you deserve to feel your best and better help makes it easier to get you started, the world's largest therapy service, they've matched millions of people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Uh, it's more convenient, more accessible, and more affordable. You'll fill out a brief questionnaire, match you with a therapist, and if you aren't clicking, you can switch to a new therapist anytime. That's a big one for me. You want to be comfortable with who you're talking to. Uh, There's no waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. So get unstuck with BetterHelp. Learn more and save 10% with your first month at BetterHelp.com slash Jake. See the shirt for those watching on the tube. BetterHelp.com slash Jake. Um, And there's a link in the the description, yeah. Uh, The other baseball signings. Uh, We had a couple qualifying offers go down. Uh, Those are always interesting. We saw... Uh, Martin Perez, who had a massive year this year, but he is 32, and his his career up until this point has been a lefty 4-5 starter. Yeah. Uh, and I, I haven't looked at the month by month, but slowed down at least a little by the end. He, he went from a very high place. but Yeah, I mean, he was he, he was all JM team for a little bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, this is a guy that's been in the league for a while. He was up in 2012. Uh, career four four three RA. He ends up putting together thirty two starts at two eight nine. Um, yeah, it's it's one of those catch twenty twos. Go check out some of Jerry Blevins' tweets about it. Like the qualifying offer kind of sucks because um, Martin Perez, if he just went straight to free agency, I mean, he would do better than this. Um, he could at least be locked in at multiple least years. years and um, total money. But uh, at the same time, this was a guy who uh, I think he got signed for four million last year. 
He's going to make close to 20 this year. Good for Martin Perez. Good for the Texas Rangers, who uh, they're a name you're going to see a lot uh, this free agency, I believe. Um, Jock Peterson accepts the qualifying offer, which is kind of funny because it's the opposite of what I asked for him this this year. I wanted Jack Peterson to go finally find a home, and maybe he will. Um, per, perhaps the another qualifying offer kind of sucks that that maybe prevented him from doing that, but he gets a good payday for it next year. So. And he, um, you know, 20, 2020 uh, is a clear outlier. 2021 uh, ends up being kind of a meh outlier, but he ended up finishing it with the beads in Atlanta and World Series and, Playoffs. you know, uh, what was he, the uh, uh, CS MVP or DS MVP, whatever it was. Um, that Yeah, he was an all-star last year for the Giants. He, uh, you know, 874 OPS, a 144 OPS plus. That is no joke, especially, um, you know, out in the Bay Area. It can be tough to hit out there sometimes. He'll get the one-year deal. Um, and, yeah, I just – I. Jock's personality and who he is uh, with his brother and everything, like, he deserves to be a staple. Like, when he was in L.A. for those six years or whatever it was, it's like, okay, uh, either go, and maybe he's going to go full vagabond, but I, I was hoping this was going to be the year he got the three-year deal and we were going to talk about Jock Peterson in one place and corner outfield DH. Least take a breath. Because he still mauls. He absolutely mauls right-handed pitching. And um, I mean, this year obviously it's a it's a very small sample, but he was no pushover against lefties this year. He's a seven forty two OPS. That's that's not unplayable. There no. was a point in his career where he became sort of unplayable against lefties. He and that uh, was that was the fear I think going into it, this free agency. And I I heard people give passionate conversations about how he was he wasn't good against lefties because he never got the opportunity to be good, and that was kind of the Dodgers' way for a little bit. Um, so yeah, they'll I think like very early in his career, he like hit them all right. And then they full platooned. Those guys accept their qualifying offers. Uh, what does that mean for their, uh, like I said, with Texas, I think they're going to be aggressive in free agency. And supposedly if one team does usurp the Yankees on Aaron judge, it's supposed to be the Giants. So let's see what else happens there. Um, they just filled a corner outfield spot. So. Kershaw, back to the Dodgers. We think it's around one for 20. Yeah, um, again, pretty crazy. Don't need to give that speech right now, but he still was really good last year and just another one-year deal until he either doesn't want to play or he does want to move to Dallas. Not really sure what that's awesome. about. Breaking news. All-star outfielder Teoscar Hernandez has been traded to the Seattle Mariners from the Toronto Blue Jays. Do we know for what? Not yet. That's just that's all Jeff Passan's tweet currently says. Sheesh. And it's the real one. Twitter's broken. We might even do a, you know, BBD, we might save that and do another, like, 10-minute clip or something. Yeah. Why not? We're a YouTube show. Um, let me close out on some pitchers really quickly. Um, Tyler Anderson, 3 for 39. To the Angels, uh, he vitalizes his career with the Dodgers like a lot of people do. Um, and then I think... You just have to be honest. The fear factor is it's going to go and die with the Angels like a lot of people have. Um, hey, I don't know. Uh, hopefully he got the sauce from the Dodgers and he can continue it out. People did project him to get a contract similar to this. So, hey. Uh, and the Angels, they actually have a lot of lefty pitchers, which, I mean, do what you want with this information. Uh, that, hey, maybe they can have like a lefty pitcher society that makes sense. Um, they've got... Uh, the young Reed Detmers, as he's figuring it out along the way. Uh, they have Patrick Sandoval, uh, and they have Jose Suarez, who all, all those guys actually have similar pitch mixes to Tyler Anderson. So maybe they're figuring something out. Maybe they all flashed it. So. Maybe they're the Angels and they stink. Uh, let's be honest. When you saw that signing, you thought it was bad. Hopefully, I don't know if hopefully we're proven wrong. And then all the bullpen signings. You know about Edwin Diaz. We already talked about that. Uh, Suarez, uh, goes back to the Padres. So does, um, who's the other guy? Nick, Nick Martinez. Nick Martinez. Couple, gonna... couple, let's be honest, boring names. A little bit, a little bit, uh, guys that kind of broke out with the Padres. They'll return good for the Padres. Thought there was a chance they'd lose that. Robert Suarez, five years. We weren't sure if any relievers were going to get three. Yeah. Uh, we had Nine that wrong. something per. Good for him, man. Relievers Thir are getting paid. 32 years old, um. Rafael Montero returned to Houston. I think we talked about that. Uh, Jose Urania to the Colorado Rockies. 
So that's uh, kind of your free agency signing wrap up. Uh, we'll see what happens next. It looks like the off season's starting to move. There's a, there's a, there's stuff, and there might be another episode about the Teoscar Hernandez trade. So we'll see you in a little bit.